the Oppo Find X2 Pro. You may have heard about it. It's fresh, it's hot, it's new. It's the latest flagship device from Oppo. Uh, they've done some crazy stuff with the Find series in the past. This one, they're kind of just packing the specs in. They're just going for that top tier sort of flagship competitor. This is not a retail box. You're not gonna get this. You will get a box that looks like this. So that's the X2 Pro, 512 gigabytes of storage, 12 gigabytes of RAM. So a lot of horsepower in there. Snapdragon, latest Snapdragon's in there, 865. It's got an aggressive screen to body ratio. It's got a free case inside of there as well. Just a pretty standard clear case that was in there. Aggressive screen to body ratio. It's got a hole punch camera. Unless I'm missing something here. That's a very tight box. Let's try it again. Is this your doing? It's a tight box, Will. You responsible for this? Can I hold you responsible for this? All right, here we go. Inside the package, textured oppo. Right here we have paperwork as you'd expect a little sim tool is in there here is device and you get the fingerprint indicator of course it's an in-display fingerprint scanner oh look at that i got the the leather like texture on mine and it's a sort of coral color i bet you they have a real fancy name for it oh just orange i thought it was gonna be like tropical coral it's just called orange and they say that it's vegan leather. I gotta admit, I don't mind the texture right now. Oppo logo over here, fairly substantial camera cutout. You can see the various modules there, including this periscope style zoom lens. And so it's gonna have a little bit of wobble to it, as you'd expect. I mean, man, the thing that strikes you is the waterfall edge that's on there really wraps around the side of the device. And what happens there is it pushes, put a screen protector up. It pushes your power switch down to sort of the bottom edge of the frame. We've seen this on other devices in the past. This is a way of giving it that science fiction feel. And it's definitely a striking appearance. Of course, you know, the criticism here is that you might have those unintentional presses. Uh, that said, if this becomes your daily device, you probably get better at figuring out exactly where to rest your hand. On the other side of the device, you have your volume rocker up and down, USB type C connector on the bottom, as well as your SIM tray. This is kind of a nice accent color on the outside as well. It's a bit of a sort of a rose gold effect to it. It goes well with this coral thing. <sighs> Definitely vegan leather. Oh, by the way, crazy charger in here as well super vuk and they have that amazing charge animation on their devices where you can see it sort of filling up in real time i love that it makes charging fun and exciting it's a 65 watt unit willie do was impatient he didn't want me to go reading the whole thing it's a 65 watt unit that is an incredible charge capability for a smartphone. We have what looks like a slightly upgraded headset included in the package from what you might be used to seeing if you're gonna even get one at all. These are in-ear style earbuds. Like I said, it's a slight upgrade. Connects via the type C port. There's no headphone jack on here. But I'm saying you could just complete the whole family thing and pick up the Oppo earbuds from our last video. Those were called the Enco Free looking like some sort of Oppo AirPods. You could link those with this and now you're having a time. So it's available in two different colors. This is the orange with vegan leather. There's also an ocean color, which is glass. Funny enough, since these materials are different, the dimensions are a bit different on depth and weight. So this is 8.8 .8 millimeters in ceramic or 9.5 millimeters in vegan leather. And it's, it's actually lighter if you go with the vegan leather layout, 207 grams in ceramic and 200 grams in vegan leather. That's all, it's quite interesting. Fast screen on here, 120 Hertz display. That seems to be a very 2020 thing. Uh, so it's 6.7 inches diagonal. That's AMOLED 3168 by 1440. 
screen to body ratio over 93%. Oh, this is a good chance to look at the hole punch cutout. It's quite small, it's up in the corner. Some people aren't huge fans of having it up in the corner because if you take a lot of selfies, you have to make a, a sort of slight angle adjustment. I don't really care that much. When Samsung did it all the way back on the S10, I was okay with it because one thing that it does do is it, when you're watching video in landscape like this, then this area of your screen real estate, typically nothing is happening there. So it's a very, as far as being distracted by your hole punch, this is the least likely place to be distracted. But then I kind of don't, I also don't mind the symmetry of having it in the center. So it's, a, it's, a, it's six of one and half a dozen of another, which has me thinking about bread again. Now it's taking me back to the uh, toaster video. the fresh bread and the whatnot. And of course, I should also update you real quick. Kirk is a gluten, there's no gluten in Kirk. That's, that's a gluten-free man right there. And so today, he was so excited from the previous bread video that we did when we had the fancy toaster. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in the hybrid bread, high-tech hybrid bread, which is actually rice and other things going on to skip the gluten, so he ate the toast. I just felt I need to update you on that. Yes, Snapdragon 865 5G, as you'd expect. 1200 nits of brightness, peak brightness. It's Gorilla Glass 6. I'm going to enroll my face first. Why don't I? Why not? Now this is an optical, bring it up. Oh, it got it there. Keep in mind, this is an optical based uh, image unlock, face unlock, but they have the fingerprint in display as well. Go ahead and register here. Pretty fast, actually. Fingerprint unlock is slightly more satisfying on here than the Samsung. Part of it is just that haptic. There's a little haptic that goes with the animation. I, I, I kind of like the implementation there. And then face, should we get a face real quick? All right. There is a skin on here as you can tell, but man, 120 makes everything better. I've been using the S20 Ultra, as you're aware, and it's a big phone. It feels like it might be fatter than this, maybe by a little bit, a little bit fatter, a little bit taller, a little bit wider. I mean, it has a 6.9 inch display. So this feels slightly comfier to hold, particularly with this slim edge that they have on there. I know I was praising Samsung for flattening that edge out, in my case, because I hate those missed presses or the misreading of presses, but there's one advantage to the slim frame and having the screen wrap around is it feels thinner in your grip. So that's something worth noting. That is a bright display. Maybe we should do a quick comparison. Versus S20 Ultra, it's definitely in the same territory. This is a better comparison here when you're in the menu system or when you're in the app tray, app drawer. It's a better comparison, look at that. And something you're gonna like about the Oppo flagship is the fact that it lets you keep 120 hertz even if you wanna run maximum resolution. So you can go up to what they call extra HD, which is QHD plus, and that's 3160. It's the full resolution of the display and you can still have your refresh rate at 120 hertz. So chances are, if I do run this Oppo device at full max display capacity, I might diminish the battery a little faster in doing so. So that's worth noting, but I like having the options. If I wanna, if I wanna cook my battery, if I wanna fry an egg on the back of my phone and, and, and the manufacturer can allow it to happen, then, then maybe I wanna do that. I don't know, I'm just talking right now. I'm speculating as you would if you were a person in my position part of the gig. We have a 48 megapixel wide angle. We have a 13 megapixel telephoto. We have a 32 megapixel front selfie. Image stabilization is baked in. It's on there as you'd expect. Why don't we just try it? That would be the thing to do, wouldn't it? Okay, so we have Otis. He's still wearing his special hat, his special outfit. Ka-blamo.
Now that's at 1x. Let's go up to 2x. Otis, you still there? Wow, he's a good subject, Will. For photos, he just stays still sometimes. So the first one got him real good. Just on the standard focal range. Look at the twinkle in his eye. Will, you got to be a proud dad Look at something like that. And then on the next one, oh, it caught a blur. He moved on that one, and then he was static again on the 2x. Let's get him on the ultra wide. Boom! So this gives you an idea of the camera versatility here. I mean, the wide is cool. There's a bit of a, a hit in terms of sharpness, I would say. That's a cool, look at the proud dad Will in the back over there. Happy Otis. Okay, all right, it seems pretty quick. Video mode, what are our options here? Okay, video resolution, 4K up to 60. Let's try that. How about 4K, 60 FPS? And I mean, there's also slow motion built in up to 1080. And you can choose your video encoding codec. All right, 4K, 60 FPS. You're not ready for it, Will. Will. We're at 1X right now. You're not ready for 60 FPS. That can capture all your action. Look at it. Oh, there he goes. Bam. Oh, jeez. No one wants to get that close. That's... They need the detail, uh... Will. It's very important. There's Kirk. All right, this gives you a quick little sample of the operation here. Like I said, 4K, 60 FPS, although you're probably not watching this back in 60 FPS, but nonetheless, very smooth. Kind of nice. Captures Kirk in sort of a full Kirk kind of way. I don't know, it looks really, it looks really real. To, it, it looks true to life is what I'm trying to say. And you have me here and then you stay on Will. It's very true to life, I gotta say. Okay, let's give the selfie camera a shot real quick. You know, we gotta do the beard hair test. So we'll give it the old one, two punch over here is the beauty. Beauty, is that natural? What is that? Natural is nothing, right? Yeah, definitely some beard hairs in there. Bam, particles on the shirt. That's what I'm always looking for. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to analyze the detail. So that's pretty cool. Now, the other thing, as you recall, the other thing was the charging, the potential to charge super rapidly. I don't have an adapter for this. That's the problem. No, no, it just need, I just need the physical adapter, if you know where it is. I just need the adapter, Will. I don't need a whole different power brick. Here with the, all the power cables. Right here? It leans on this little thing? Oh, no, that's not it. It's a, oh, an orange thing? There's a European right. Is that European? Is that European capable right there? Is that unbox there? Let me right see now? that real quick. Am I crazy right now that European capable right now? It looks like European capable. Yeah. Give it a shot. That's the unbox therapy brand power box. Yeah, like you never know the stuff that shows up. Holy. When this thing charges Super Vuk style 2.0. All right, so it's the official charger and the official cable. The time is now. Yes. Where's the animation, man? It says it's charging, but there's no cool animation. I know it's charging. It's supposed to be the Super Vuk, the whole... Well, why don't we have the animation? Uh, don't you remember the Super Vuk animation? Maybe they got rid of it. Hey! I, it was because of the Google... Up. Look at the speed on that. You see how they put the two decimal points, so you feel like you're flying, Kirk. You never had that experience before. Super Voop 2.0. This, everybody should take points off this, pointers off this, because it's, it's great. You have the hyper super speed on your charger. Maximum dart, super dart, super Voop. You understand? Yeah. But what good is it when you don't see it, when you don't witness it? I mean, we're flying right now. That's speed. And 70 something addictive about charging at this speed at 65 watts. And it really makes you question, what's everybody else doing, Will? 72, 73, I mean, it's just a cool look. I understand it's a fringe thing, but if you're an enthusiast, there's something compelling and, and reassuring about seeing that thing clock up so quickly, because what it does is it eliminates your battery anxiety. Cause you know, all you gotta do is find an outlet for just a couple minutes and blam, 
65 watts full blast back into the phone. I think it's just a really cool thing to see. Okay, a couple of other things I want to check out. Obviously the audio performance, so let's just stream a video real quick. Oh, this is a crazy recent episode of Lou Later. Android for iPhone. Just let that simmer. Android is available on iPhone. Wait, what? Audio? Oh, lots of audio. Great volume over here. Okay, I'm happy with the speaker. 90 euros, which converts to a thousand bucks. Okay, so it's around a thousand dollars. The styling has to be your thing. If you're looking for a texture like this, I could see some people being interested. Of course, they do have the other model. It's nice to see some alternative materials over here because there's just so many glass phones out there. So that's kind of nice, but they do still offer a glass version if that's more your speed. Initial camera performance looks pretty promising. Otis can attest to it. Speaker sounds good. I like the fact that I can run the 120 Hertz at full resolution if I choose to. It's really gonna be about the display with this device in my estimation. And then let's not forget <laughs> one of my favorite features. And I promise it's not just because of the name, the name is fun to say. It's Super VOOC 2.0. Will, you wanna hit him with a refresh on that? What's it called? Super VOOC 2.0.